A beautiful CNU morning, Dr. Mananay and classmates. I am Rem, your Topic 15 reporter. Let me start this presentation with this question. Are you a call educator? Let's try to figure out if it's a yes or a no by naming the following software. The first one, which I am actually using right now. What is this software? You got it right. Easy, right? It's the PowerPoint. Let's move on to the second one. Yes, yes, yes. It is the VLC media player or the Video LAN client media player. I believe most of us have this one in our laptops and desktops. And let's move to the third one. I actually use this one for my ESL students. Yes, it's Skype, our friendly neighborhood in the virtual village. And let's move to this one. I have been using this one for two to three years or maybe more than that for my creative video design or no, lesson design. It's very useful. Canva, yay, congratulations. And now for our electronic mails, you've got email in your Gmail, yay. And let's have the last one. I actually use this one to create video lessons so that my students can have learning reinforcement. YouTube, who has YouTube account? Yes, paki like and subscribe my <laughs> YouTube channel, Teacher Wonderland. Anyway, yes, congratulations. If you know the PowerPoint, VLC Media Player, Skype, Canva, Gmail, and YouTube, you can be considered as a call educator. But regardless if it's a yes or a no, this topic is for you. So thank you for sticking to this video lesson. I hope that your connection is still there with you. Hindi kayo pinababayaan. You know, for how many weeks now, you and I have been learning about the methods of English language teaching, the ELT methods, either if it's historical or modern. And the topic that I am about to share with you today, which is the call method falls under the modern methods of ELT. Before digging in, I would like to emphasize the reason because it's nice to tap our why power. Why are we learning what we have been learning? Why learn about these methods of ELT? Because there's no single best method for every learner, regardless of whatever context it is. So as the saying goes, no size fits all. So we really have to familiarize all the methods that, av that are available so that we can choose the most appropriate method for this set of learners, for this kind of topic that we teach. And now for today, you are going to define what is this call method what is its development? And when I say development, it has something to do about the origin or the history, the phases of this method. We are also going to learn about the dynamics. Um, what are the examples? How are we going to demonstrate or to implement this call method? And lastly, the dignity and denunciation. So just for the sake of having letter D for this presentation, but when you say dignity, it has something to do with the advantages and the disadvantages, I call it the denunciation. Napaka formal teacher rem. Now, let's define what is call. Call means computer-assisted language learning. So that's computer-assisted language learning. So as what the name of it suggests, it has something to do about making use of computer software, utility software, system software, application software, and the internet-based activities to learn a language, for our learners to learn English. And interactive, this is also an interactive approach that helps our dear learners achieve their goals of learning at their own pace and ability. 
In this method, computer technology is used in teaching learning procedures at all stages from the introduction, discussion, you know, presentation practice, and feedbacking is included. So this is useful. We're done discussing about the definition of call method. Now it's time for us to discuss about the phases, history, or simply the development of call method. It all started around 1950. It's the birth of the first ever type or phase of call, which is called the behaviorist call. So this is based on the behaviorist learning model. And when I, when I say behaviorism, we can remember B.F. Skinner. So it has something to do about conditioning. There's a stimulus, there's a response, you know, rewards and punishment. Actually, before this call method came, the computer-assisted learning way was successfully used to different fields like uh, entrepreneurship and me medical field. It's not yet um, being practiced in the education realm. But because of its usefulness and the success of this computer-assisted learning, that is why the call method the call was used in the education based from the behaviors learning model that if a learner can hear the sound, then he or she can respond to it. So basically, that is how this method existed. So obviously, this is the oldest, knowing this is the first uh, type of or phase of call method. During this a method, I mean, phase of call method, there is the usage of repetitive language drills. So as you can see in the picture, this is one of the type of machines that they were using during this phase of call method. All right, so there you go. At least we can have a glimpse of what do the machines that were being used during this time. So look at the computers at that time. Okay, now let's move on to the second phase of this method, the communicative call. It is more interactive compared to the previous behaviorist call. And during the that phase, the behaviorist call, learners could actually learn grammar explicitly. So right there and then, uh, the, the, the grammar focus was being directly instructed or given. Whereas on this phase, the communicative goal during the 1970, the grammar was taught implicitly. So not directly, but it was being um, integrated through activities. So as you can see in the picture, there was this video conferencing, the, the use of earphones, Let's say bye to the 1970 and say hi to the 1990, the birth of integrative or explorative call. So this has something to do about the utilization of multimedia and your favorite internet. Can you still recall during your elementary years? In my case, it is it was when I was in high school or college that my teachers made use of CD-ROM. What is that? The compact disk read only memory where we can store our data, the information that, uh, that, that we did for our classes and also the make, making use of projectors before the present, uh, the PowerPoint, the Canva thing, the, the, the internet, there's the projector era. All right, so during this stage, it is considered as the most important phase the making use of multimedia. And unlike the previous phase, this phase of call method offered more activities and interactions to the learners. Obviously, because the technology had been more and more developed during this time. Now, from the January 1990, there is a greater improvement of this integrative call or explorative call that we can call the latest integrative call. This era integrates technology and internet more fully. So, na yung mga internet ang um, rich people now uh, during this time. So, this is the most recent stage right now. We are actually using this latest integrative call.
Okay, hey, we're done with the definition, development. Now let's proceed to the dynamics. How to implement or how to conduct or how to utilize this method. So as a call educator, you should have the guts and the gas. Let me repeat that. As a call educator, you should have the guts and the gas. Okay, so what's gas? First, it's letter G, gadgets. So how are we able to deliver our lesson using the call method without cell phone or a computer? So gadgets is a must. Now, letter A, the attitude. You know, it has to be a good one, a good attitude towards technology. Because if we are afraid or reluctant, if we have this negative attitude in making use of technology or, you know, writing in our lesson outlines or lesson planning, the integration of ICT with the rest of the learning areas. So we should have a good attitude when it comes to using technology or internet in our class. And the S of GAS is skills. Looking back, you know, teachers, both private and public, had been into webinars or seminars just to improve their knowledge and skills when it comes to using ICT integration or making use of gadgets, you know, technology. Magiging techie because when you are techie, it will be techie easy. And our learners actually will become more participative and interested because of the creative lessons that we have. So this call method is actually a good one. So remember, if it's a yes, you're a call educator, then you have the guts and gas, gadgets, attitude, and skills. So we can actually make use of this method in both inside the classroom and outside. So in the classroom, we can actually utilize our computer laboratories because, of course, in there, our learners can explore computers and, you know, utilize what is there in our ICT laboratories, making use of internet. Of course, there should be, you know, somehow the orientation of how should one uh, how to use the computer laboratory internet responsibly. And of course, the ICT integration to other learning areas. As one of the public school teachers, we are really tasked to integrate, uh, integrate ICT to other learning areas. You know, um, not just for the TLE or computer class, but as well as language class. You know, when I teach English, I should make use of technology and not just that, but I should also make use of, you know, the, the skills, the computer skills that my learners have, um, shall I say, have learned from their TLE class or computer class, you know, how to send email, maybe I can have, you know, paragraph writing and let them send through email. So that's one example. And doing class tasks via social media responsibly, let me emphasize that responsibly. Now, outside the classroom, of course, we, we can have our learners to do some research work, to have home task submission via email. And of course, this one online class, what uh, our um, professors have been doing in Cebu Normal University, blended learning, asynchronous, synchronous learning. Right here, what I am doing right now, I am teaching or I am presenting, I am reporting, I am discussing something about this call method virtually yet heartily. <laughs> All right. May paano pa. Okay, so this time, I am going to show to you uh, an example of this call method. This is not exactly the whole thing. This is just a portion of it. So here's the first video. Dear students, I am Teacher Rem. This is just less than a minute video. I would like to remind you, dear students, the importance of learning the forms of verbs. There are five basic forms. First, the base form. Second, the S form. Third, the ING form or the ING form. Fourth is the past form. And the fifth one, the past participle form of a verb. Let's say the verb love. That's the base or root form, love, no S. The S form is just simply add S, loves. The ING form, loving. Past form, love. The past participle is loved. 
Yes, the same with the past form. But if you have the irregular form like take, the past participle for that verb is taken, unlike the past form which is took. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye. God loves you so much. A A pop, A A pop. That acrostic A A pop is what I have been using since 2018 or 2019 to my learners when I teach them about modal verbs. A stands for ability. The second A is advice. P is permission. O is obligation. And the last P is probability or possibility. Can and could are modal verbs to be used when you express ability. Can for present and could for past. A A pop, A A pop. The second A is advice. Use the modal verb should. When you want to ask permission, use this modal verb may. Next is O, obligation. Use should, have to, must, and ought to. And the last type of modal verb is possibility or probability. You may use either may or might. Depends on the chances. Use may if it is the the chance or bigger chance. Well, if it's not, if it has lesser chance, use might. Gamay gamay chance. There you go. I guess you have learned two songs for today. The first one is a a pop. A pop and the second one is Dako Dako Chance May Gamay Gamay Chance Might. I hope that that will somehow help you learn modal verbs the simpler way. God loves you so much. Until next time, bye. Hi there, dear learners. Teacher Rem here. Tomorrow is November 2, and it only means one thing it is the full face to face class participation. But before that, let me share something about the five communicative speech styles. The C-C-F-I-F. -F. Let me repeat that. C-C-F-I-F. -F. Let me repeat that. C-C-F-I-F. -F. The first C, casual. The second C, consultative. F, the first F, formal. I, informal. No, intimate. Fifth one. Or the last one, frozen. Let me repeat that. C C F I F. Let me repeat that. C C F I F. Casual, consultative, formal, intimate, and frozen. Now, teacher Ram, why is there a need for us to learn these five communicative speech styles? Dear learners, it is for you to first. Minimize conflicts. Yes, you and I cannot avoid one, but at least you can minimize conflicts. Second is for you to build stronger and better relationships. Imagine if more and more students or more and more people will try to identify the best communicative speech style to use to a certain person or to a cer certain group of people. Imagine that. The, the third or the last one is for you to solve a problem. Yes, it can help you solve a problem. Imagine this, I'm a teacher and one of my students would say, as I ask, hello, Mr. Lioren, why are you late? And then, chill, sis, or maybe we can just use the word chill. Chill, teacher Ram, hello, it's traffic kaya, lol. I don't get it, it doesn't fit. And how about when your mother calls you, Burn, dinner's ready. And then here comes you replying like this. Good day, mama. I regret to inform you that currently I am playing and I cannot help but, you know, keep going with the thing that I am doing right now. So I am afraid I cannot respond to you immediately. It's way too formal, right? So there, it's very important for you to learn these five communicative speech styles. The C-C-F-I-F, -F, let me repeat that. C-C-F-I-F, -F, casual, consultative, 
formal, intimate, and frozen. The casual style is used between and among friends. You can use actually slang words. You can use your endearment. You know, the one that you call your friends with. Like, what's up, dude? Chill. Chillax. I'm relaxing here. How about you? What's up? Something like that. Casual lang. Consultative. It is the speech style to use when you are talking with your doctor or an interview with your teacher. Or if and when you are at a guidance office, you know, talking with the guidance coordinator. Formal. It is between you and your teacher. You and your boss. Next is intimate. You know, your parents. What else? You know, your best friend. But of course, it depends upon the level of your friendship, of your relationship. If you are too close, then you can have your intimate style of speech like, I appreciate you, I like you, I love you, good night, sleep well, moi, something like that. Question, teacher, how about my boyfriend? How about my girlfriend? Focus first on your studies. Copy ang wallpen, dili ang boyfriend. Now, we have the last one, frozen. It is when you recite the panunumpa sa katapatan ng watawag or when you share your motto in life, your favorite Bible verse. So that's it. Let me repeat that. C-C-F-I-F. -F, that's the five communicative speech styles. I hope that you have learned something from Teacher Rem. Let me say bye for today to say hi next time. God loves you so much. Tarina. It's another remarkable Tuesday, Kaitula. And dear wanderers, this is your tutor guide, Rem, from Basak Night High School, Lapu-Lapu City, excited to teach you virtually yet heartily. As I have mentioned earlier, let us recognize and appreciate our EBW or our early bird wanderers. I know that a lot of you are here. So I hope that you, dear Wanderers and Kaitulai, will be participating on these activities virtually yet heartily. That's from 9 in the morning down to 12 noon. And yes, congratulations to, to these WBO, Wanderers Best Outputs. We picked the best one. That's dear Wanderer Danielin C. Paroli from Santa Lucia National High School. I know that you are ready to wander as you wander around English 10 learning adventure. Yes, learn from one stop after another. The review spot. So here you can see a blank. So what is this? What is this type of definition that is also known as extended definition because it provides more details? in the form of several sentences, especially if the word or phrase defined, sorry, has multiple meanings. Now, welcome to the second stop, dear wanderers, the trail thrill for the first challenge called Spot It. You can earn 10, not just five tokens, but 10 tokens. So this is actually a combination of what we had discussed and what we are about to tackle this afternoon. So all you have to do is very simple. You are going to spot or identify the described part of the research report. This is actually eight items, but my pa bono si tutor guide Rem. So it's going to be eight plus. To see the last three parts, you will be discovering more about them right there at the comment section 15. Okay. Now take a screenshot for your learning postcard. This is your souvenir. Congratulations, dear Wanderers and Kaitula. You have just discovered something about the reader response approach. Here, the reader is essential to the meaning of a text. Remember the formula? Text plus reader equals the meaning of the text. Excited for next Tuesday because you are going to learn more, better, and deeper about research. God loves you so much. Bye. See you next Tuesday. Thank you, Mommy. Ang husay naman.
So obviously the last video is just a compilation of varied videos or tutorial videos that I compiled. And I hope that that would somehow give us the gist of a sample, a demonstration of what, of how to use this method, the call method. All right, so this time I'm going to share useful applications that I personally have been using for my class. Not really, I'm not consistent in using this one simply because of the, the status of my learners and sometimes the internet in our school is not that cooperative if I may use that one, that, that word. All right, so we have here the first one. I know that most of us, if not all of us, are familiar with Kahoot. This is for our interactive online quizzes, games, you know, trivia, pools, etc. So here's the link. Now we have the Mintimeter. This is for our online lesson presentations, pools, and even giving feedback. So I hope that you are familiar with that. And maybe I can, you know, help you by presenting the logo aside from the name of the application and at the same time, the link. You can take a screenshot. One, two, three. You paki SS. Okay, now we have Slido or Slido and Teacher Kit. So first we have the Slido. It is Teachers go to interaction app for hybrid class meetings. I haven't used this one personally because I have just encountered this application in the middle of preparing for this presentation. And the last one, teacher kit. It's the classroom management assistant. So I hope that you can, uh, we can use this application. Well, it depends upon our setting and the type of learners that we have along with the availability of their gadgets and connect connectivity. And we also have, I also have here some useful links. This one is a very useful microsite by Itulai, Department of Education Itulai. This was actually um, created and collaborated with the program heads and some of the tutors of the DepEd National Itulai program because of the pandemic thing. So there this program existed. So I hope that you can visit this microsite and yes, you can actually um, search for a complete um, PowerPoint presentation, video lessons from kinder to grade 10, I know, even for grade 12, down to grade 12 and the special programs alive, even us, even scouting, it's complete. I hope you can visit the, this site. The second was is the zipgrade.com. It is called the touchless grade system. Uh, it's not for free. Zipgrade is not for free. But if you have the budget, why not? This will make your teacher life easier. And yes, the QR code. You know, aside from the bitly.com where you can actually shorten the, the long link that you have because when you see long link, it's kind of topsy-turvy or it's not good to look at. So you can shorten the link using bitly or the, there are actually a lot of um, sites to shorten the link. And this one, QR code, you know, just simply um, install QR code and then just by the mere sight of the code then just scan it then there you go you can actually uh, go to the site that you want to go to okay we're done with the definition development and the dynamics now let's have the dignity and denunciation of computer assisted language learning method i'm talking about the advantages and disadvantages now we have first the dignity or the advantages of course this call method allows us to have a flexible course structuring why flexible it's because of the asynchronous type uh, I know that we are very familiar with that because our professor, our beloved, um, brilliant professor, Dr. Mananai, have been using this one. We have synchronous and asynchronous classes. So, you know, the flexibility and there's power in flexibility. Now we have better time management. We can actually uh, be at home or be at the internet cafe or your favorite spot where you can just, you know, make use of your time in making uh, your assignments, the school works that you have to do the third one feedback management um our teachers can or we teachers can use email you know gmail and of course we also have this google classroom 
Next is, um, let me, okay, the enhanced digital skills. Of course, because our learners will get used to this method. So eventually their computer skills, their digital skills will be enhanced. Next is the real-time online collaboration. It comes synchronous online class. So we can have the Q&A, we can have the class itself, real-time, actual time. Next, we have the easy administration with our gadgets plus the internet. We can actually have our quizzes or, you know, the like and the like. Now we have the high definition video conferencing. You can make use of Skype, Zoom, Google Meet for this. Okay, next we have the um, API and plugins for website integration. So what is API? It is the application programming interface. You can actually research more about that. So it has something to do about plugins for website integration. So this is actually the benefits of virtual classrooms, a classroom software method or the computer assisted language learning method. Now let's move to the denunciation, the negative side, the criticism, because of course, not all methods are, shall I say, uh, fitting or, you know, teachers and learners can really automatically embrace the methods. First is the limitations of gadgets and technology. Not every teacher and learner have this one. Maybe they have the ability to use the, the computer, but not there's no availability of the gadgets and technology or yeah, the internet. Next is unstable connectivity. That's our enemy when it comes to online class. And the third one, negativity with or from the usage of internet. Because as we all know, there are the negative or ill effects of too much usage of internet because not everything from the world wide web is considered to be true, reliable, and good. So let's be careful and responsible as village, uh, online village nomad, or shall I say resident. Now we have the reluctance and fear. I really believe that there are still teachers who do not give you know, enough time for themselves to get to know computers, get to know technology better. They're, they have reluctance and they are afraid of, you know, even the mere touching of computer. But I believe they are on their way to become a call educator. So we're done with definition, development dynamics, and the dignity and denunciation. Yay! Now let me bring you back to the question. Are you a call educator? Or let me be more specific. Are you a passionate and excellent call educator? Congratulations if it's a yes. And if it's still no, there is still a lot of room for improvement. That's for you and I. Let me end this with two quotations. First, technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. And she opens her mouth with wisdom and teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Thank you so much, Dr. Mananai and classmates. I hope that you have learned a thing or two from my presentation. Let me say bye for today to say hi next time.